How do you plot in Maple? Let's take a look at that right now. Suppose you've got Maple, and you want to plot something. The standard kind of plot commands are either to plot the graph of a function, so f of x equals something specific, or to plot the graph of an equation. And let's take a look at both of these in just a second. Plotting a function is the easiest of all in Maple. The basic command in Maple is to give it a plot, tell it the name of the function, or a formula for the function. So in this case, this right here. So let's see, that's x to the fourth minus 5 times x cubed, minus 12 times x squared, plus 44 times x, plus 80. The only other thing you need to tell Maple is to give it a range of values to plug in to build a table of values. So if you want to plot this from minus 10 to 10, say, you would type in x equals minus 10 dot dot 10. That says to, for Maple to make a plot over the x values from minus 10 to 10. And this parentheses, put in a semicolon, and run the command, and Maple gives me this graph right here. And if I roll my mouse over it, I can see where the dots are. All Maple did is just connected the dots. Maple will attempt to go and make the graph large enough to show every y value you've picked. What this usually means is that the y axis is scaled really far out of whack on the x axis. So one of the things people will frequently do is, after they pick their x range, is to go back and add another comma and to add optional things to this. One of the most common options is to add a y range. So let's say this goes, let's try checking this out from minus 100 to 100. So the same basic syntax. When I run it now, I get this graph. And I kind of see that the graph comes down, goes up, comes down, goes up. But I'm missing some detail on the top. So let me keep the same lower bound, but let me bring this up to, say, 500. So from minus 100 to 500. And when I rerun that, now I get this graph right here, and I can see it very, very well. So adding a Y range is one of the options you can do. Let me show you two others that might be useful. One of the things that will end up happening is you'll often find that your graphs are so skinny that they'll hide behind the axes. So one of the options you have is an option called thickness, which thickens up a graph. The default thickness is 1, so if you put in a bigger number like 3 and rerun the command, then I get the same shape, but now the graph has been thickened up a little bit. Another option is the color command. So you could tag this after your thickness, put a comma, and then type color, and then put in a standard color like green. And now I have the same curve with the same thickness colored green. I'll let you experiment with this to see what other options you might find. But how about an equation like this right here? Well, let me give myself a little bit of space to work with. If I was going to do this by hand, I'd have to solve this equation for y first. But thankfully, Maple can do that. So let's try this out. This is x times y plus 5 equals x plus 2 times y. So I'm going to plug that equation in, and then I'm going to solve this. Now remember, we just selected it, right-clicked, and we picked solve. Now in this case, to make the graph of a function, I'd need to solve this for the variable y. So I select y and I find out that this equation right here is the same as this equation right here. So if I plot this function, that'll be the graph I'm looking for. So let me include another piece of space right here, and I'm going to type in plot. Oops, sorry, plot. If Maple ever gives you output, one of the easiest things you can do is you can copy and paste that output someplace else. So I'm just going to copy the function down here, and maybe make it on the range x going from minus 10 to 10, and the y value is going from minus 10 to 10. So if I rerun this command, then Maple gives me this graph right here. If I put the cursor over it, I'll see these dots right here. Notice that this part of the graph running down the middle is really an error. There are no points on the curve right here. Right? The graph has a discontinuity at x equals 2, not a vertical line running through it. And that's just because Maple is connecting dots, connecting dots, connecting dots, connecting dots. It's not thinking about the graph. One neat feature about Maple that's not common on calculators is another option. If I were to go and type in D-I-S-C-O-N-T, discont for discontinuity, equals true, you can tell Maple to hunt for vertical asymptotes. And now when I rerun this command, I get the same curve, but with no line in the middle. This is really what the graph looks like. One last little trick. What if you wanted to put these two graphs on the same axes? As long as you've got Maple 12 or 13, this is easy as clicking on one of them, holding the left mouse button, and dragging it onto the other graph. And voila, there's the two graphs in one. So that's the very, very basics of maple plotting. You should experiment and see what you can do with it.